What's going on, y'all? Welcome back to the 10 7 show with Tara Tower Goose and myself. You're here for yet another Sunday. We appreciate y'all hanging with us. And um, it's the week after Super Bowl, it's actually NBA All Star Weekend. The, the show, the, the game don't start till after our show goes off, though. So don't you ain't gotta go over there. It won't start. We talk to the NBA, we will not start <laughs> until your show is done, but you got to be finished by eight o'clock. I said, oh, all right. okay, well, we'll be done before eight since you have it's so important to you to watch it. We'll, we'll be done around that time. So, yeah, yeah. I spoke to the NBA and, and, and uh, we came to an agreement. Oh, good. Wonderful. Oh, thank you for doing that. That was so kind that we might, you know, impinge on some of their viewership. But I said, no, well, we can work this out. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yes, it's another Sunday, and we like to say hello to everybody. But we want to, I want to ask my people how they've been. So, Tara, Tara Goose, how y'all been? Great, we've been really good. Yeah, man. Our birthday was last week. Hi, Sheena. Yeah. Happy belated. Thank you. So, we went, we had a long weekend. <laughs> we did. Tell us, tell us, tell us about, us about, about it. I'm gonna... So, we drove out to Ohio. Where, where Tanya to stay, and we uh, that was on the eighth. Then on the ninth, we drove from Columbus down to Louisville, Kentucky, and sp- spent the weekend in Kentucky. And uh, we had a ball. There was a lot of alcohol yeah. involved. Went down there on the Bourbon Trail. It's bourbon and everything. Yeah. Now the Bourbon <laughs> Trail. What, what's what's the Bourbon Trail? So it's like um you know how so, like we go to the wineries like we've yeah. done in the past with you guys and like just go to the different wineries and do tastings and yeah, stuff like that. Same thing. Similar concept, except it's you go to distilleries and, and, and get yeah. a flight. Mm-hmm. Oh, that sounds that sounds yeah. Yes. Put hair so, on your chest. Yeah. So how was that like? So you just throwing back shots of bourbon, like different. I guess like I would have yeah. been different. Like, so yeah. yeah, so so some of them have like guided tastings where yeah. you know what I mean there's a guy there with you and he gives you some, a couple of techniques on how to drink it and swirl it and things to see if you can you know provoke some flavors. Uh because let me stop you know, right there. Let me stop you right there. Did did that did you notice a difference? Like did that make a difference? Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You smell it, and you taste it, you hold yeah. it in your mouth a certain way, you let it roll down your yeah. throat a certain way. And- so so one thing that he showed us was, um, you know, you take a small sip and you kind of swish, swish it, it around. around. And what that does is it gets your palate ready for you to drink it. So, ne- so then subsequent sips, you can tolerate it better because you've already kind of you know what I mean? Got the shock out of the way. Mm-hmm. And the, and that helps with the taste. Yep. It helps with, and it's like, it's it's smooth. I don't know. It's, yeah. not, it's not like, oh my God, burns my chest. Like, I didn't experience that at all. Yeah. Really? Yeah. We I were in an old fashioned speakeasy. Like, their yeah, whole. You have to give us some techniques after the show. <laughs> the whole thing is <laughs> like, that whole place was like a museum. It was a museum. Yeah. The Welcome Center yeah, they have, for the uh, Bourbon Trail is a museum. So there's like the history of bourbon and whiskey. Yeah, and yeah. So we actually did this one exercise where it was make your old your own old fashioned, and it was set up like uh, old time speakeasy. Yeah, it was fun. Everybody had their own station, and you know your brown sugar cubes, and you they had a a good selection of bitters you could choose from for your drink. Um, yeah, it was dope. It was fun. We yeah. we drank a lot. There was yep. a lot of drinking. Yep. Shout out to so Tanya and my brother in law Omar for a dope weekend. Mm-hmm. It was fun. Thanks, guys. Shout out Bye. to them. Um, also, you did some interesting stuff that you put on the 10 7 page on Facebook. If y'all not part of the oh, yeah. Facebook, make sure y'all yeah. so <laughs> you did um, something interesting. Yeah, so he was inebriated. <laughs> I wasn't that inebriated. I would have did it even if I had been drinking. Um, he was loving the action. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we did this bar crawl, and one of the places that we stopped had a mechanical bull. So the line, the, it was nobody in line for it. So I said, "I'm going for it." And he went for it. And I did it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> <laughs> there he was. <laughs> 
Start my legs is so short, I wouldn't have nothing to grip onto. Yeah, and you know, I never realized it was that high mm -hmm. because yeah, the floor nice. around it, of course, it's like uh, hollowed out. It's not, it's not hollowed out, but it's like uh, inner tubes, you know what I mean? So when you fall on it, you know, what I mean, you got a cushion landing, so you're sinking down into that, and then the the the, the put part of the bowl you sit on where the saddle is was almost chest height, right? For me, right. Cause I, I I stood there. I was like, Phew, I don't even know if I can get on this job. <laughs> Cow down, they right? <laughs> you no, know, listen. That's all right. He gonna saddle up. He coming through Cow Town this summer. <laughs> Yo said I give eight point two for the landing. Thank oh, you. Man. <laughs> oh, man. That was planned. I was like, I'm gonna let go. <laughs> I right. think look, like, it looked like he was like, let me let go. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. we, we're going to get to the would you rather push on the show in just a second. I, actually, I I have a, a story for y'all about what well, I find it funny. Y'all might be like, okay, that's cool. <laughs> I, I've, I've ridden on them things a couple times. Mm -hmm. One time, I don't remember where I was. I might have been in Florida. I don't know where I was. Okay. But they, you, they, did they give you gloves to hold on to the rope? Yeah. All right, so they gave me, they had these like big gloves, like these big, like Undertaker, the wrestler looking gloves, mm -hmm. gloves, right? To hold on. Mm -hmm. right. And yeah. I was holding on, but it was like put one hand up in the air. So you know, you hold on, hold on, hold on. And, <laughs> and the thing, the thing flew, you know, I got thrown off the thing, right? <laughs> I got one glove on my hand, the other glove, you know, felt you know, flew off. So I'm looking for the glove, looking for the glove, looking for the glove. The glove was still holding on to the rope somehow, just like this. Oh my god! <laughs> and, I, and, I, and I was thrown off the thing. I, I couldn't, you know. Knock like, you out your gloves. How? Glove doesn't yeah. fit. That's crazy. She was still holding on. Like it was crazy. Mm. Yeah. No, but this rope had. Um, That's hilarious. Sounds like bull. To me. Had like a piece of hose over top of it, so you can, so it wouldn't hurt you. Uh, okay. Yeah. yeah. This one. This part. This one was like actual rope. So I guess oh, yeah. one. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. No, nah, you was at Rural House. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, here we come. Here we come to the country world. Okay. We, be oh, oh, we, 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 we made our entry. But you know what? No, we started we, the country. We started world. country. So. I know. I know. But I'm, I'm just saying. Back. People mm -hmm. are. Yeah. 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 Wilson Pickett. Um, so we're going to. Uh, okay. huh? Go ahead. Oh, we're gonna get oh, to the next. Justin, show. You know what? Yeah. Did, I thought about you too. Yeah, we passed when we were down there because they're you know that's home of like the the Louisville Slugger. Oh, you talking about Kentucky? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yes, hello. <laughs> Y'all just started yeah. talking. Blue, I was about to. I was about to introduce. I'm sorry, because that comment yeah. came up. Kentucky has the Louisville Kentucky. Slugger outlet. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, yeah, Louisville. Then yeah, Louisville, Kentucky, where mm -hmm. Louisville. Yeah. So yeah, um, so next time we go, y'all yeah, go. We had some good barbecue. Yeah, it was yeah. Nice. And was this sauce or no sauce? Whatever kind of sauce you wanted. Yeah, like or, or the one rub. the one restaurant that we went to had, I don't know, like six different so, kinds yeah. of sauce. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. It was fun. It was fun. Yeah. We could go. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to get to the next portion of the show, and y'all know what part of the show it is. show brought to you by Therapeutic Billing and Tara. If you will, please tell us about Therapeutic Billing. Absolutely. Therapeutic Billing is a full-service medical billing and credentialing firm that focuses on individual and small group specialty practices. Therapeutic Billing offers bookkeeping and virtual assistance services in addition. For more information, please visit our website, which is therapeuticbilling.com, and the telephone number is 610 228 2029. Abby, get your virtual assistant. Here we go. That's and all that other stuff, too. But the, the virtual assistant is the one that sticks in my mind all the time. Yeah, I think we all have a virtual assistant, okay? Some For sure. All right, here we go. Did you? 
you where you get these would you rather's from? Here we go. I I did not get these would you rather's. Let me just <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Imagine you're both stranded on a desert a island. Question. Would you rather have endless books to read or unlimited music to listen to? Um, no good music to listen to. I'm going with endless books. Yeah. I say music. Terry, you said books. I said books. I say give music. Me, give me music. Because I can have my own little party. <laughs> okay. Well, if you had the books, though, you could eat them if it got bad enough. <laughs> Fight one. That is true. Mm -hmm. Fiber. All right. So here's the next one. If you can only choose one, well, I'm sorry. it's tearing it page by page. Mm -hmm. um, if you could only choose one, would you rather have a never ending supply of your favorite food or always find the perfect parking spot? Parking spot. Parking spot. Yeah. Mm. Give me my food. I've never ended supply of my favorite food. I think I would I'm get tired of it. Yeah. Just because you have a never ending supply of it doesn't mean that that's the only thing that you have to constantly eat. All that means is that every time you want something, it's at your disposal. That's true. But I'd rather, I'd rather have the perfect parking spot everywhere I go. Well, I'm going to go with food because if I have that, then I'm never going to be hungry. Yeah. What about you? And I and I ain't worrying about it. I could park far away because if I got an endless supply of my favorite food, I probably need the extra steps. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. That's true. Mm -mm. All right. So here's the next one. Would you rather wear wedding attire every day or rock sweatpants all the time? Sweatpants all the Pants. time. Yeah. yeah. Wedding attire. I mean, yeah. Give me. I mean, give me sweatpants. I don't have to get dressed. Come on. <laughs> Yeah. Like I don't, I don't mind getting dressed, but every day that's a lot. Wedding attire that's uh, a yeah. lot. Give me sweatpants. Yeah, give me sweatpants. Just gotta rock sweats for the wedding. Okay. Hey, we might be able to do it. Make me a, a dress out of some sweats. Who knows? They do All have right. dresses made out of sweatpants material. Mm-hmm. I saw them. Mm -hmm. All right. So here, here's the last one. Imagine dating someone who looks like your high school crush. Versus someone who resembles your celebrity crush. Crush. What would you rather choose? So your high school crush or your celebrity crush? Celebrity. Yeah, celebrity. Yeah, I probably choose celebrity. Who is your celebrity crush? I don't know. I don't even have one anymore. Well, y'all know who mine is. I would say celebrity crush, but yeah. I don't have you, which 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 celebrity crush? How many celebrity crushes do you have? No, I was gonna say I only have one. They're endless. They're endless. Oh wow, they're really? <laughs> I mean, it, it does. Every time a new show come out. Oh, Miguel said his is Serena Williams. Mm. Justin, who is yours? So you want me to start the list and just go ahead stop start it the at list. a certain who's, point? Who's number one on your list? It depends on what day of the week. And the time of the year, and where the zodiac <laughs> and the moon are aligning, like all the well, who comes to mind yes, first? Well, he since he says Serena, right? I'm 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 going to say um. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, oh like, no. I'm say mine is a uh, Kate Kate Perry. Who's Kate, Kate Perry? Kate Perry. No. Who's that? She's a singer, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I I'm gonna go with um. I'll go with Lauren London. Lauren London. Lauren London. Oh, okay. yeah, she's a cutie pie. She's a cutie pie. Mm -hmm. Tyra, who's yours? Oh, my celebrity crush, Chris Brown. <laughs> I never knew him. You didn't know that? No. How old is Chris Brown? <laughs> <laughs> Babe, for real. I don't know Tyra was a president. He's just mad because I was crazy. That's all. Yeah, he like, he like 22 right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was so young. <laughs> Who's yours? Think of one. What? It's got to be somebody right now that you're like, yeah. Come on, Goose. Who me? Yes, you, Goose. I don't know. I don't know. So I'm the only woman that he, absolutely he, he pines for. So he doesn't have a celebrity crush. I'm his celebrity crush. Indeed. Mm-hmm. 
Yep. Sarah, that's that's a little. Idris Elba. Okay. Nah, he all right to me. He doesn't do it for me the way he wants it. Like I like years ago, I thought he was pretty hot, but I don't know too much anymore. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, give me, give me, give me breezy. Miguel said Goose looks like. No. like I'm not really a Holly Berry fan. No? To me, she was like around the way cute. Yeah, she's she's kind of average. I went to school with girls. Oh, she, you like know, she, the, the one though. Um, oh, what is her name? Stacy Dash. Well, she's insane, Stacey but I mean, she's Absolutely. she's not hard on the eyes. When she when she was like uh, Money Talk, was it Money Talks? Was it Money Talks? I forgot. What was that movie? I called? think it was Money well, Talks. Well, Clueless. Clueless. She was in Clueless, yeah. but she, so was, uh, she was the one with Damon that. Wayne. She was in. A one with Damon Wayne. Oh, was that when he was the, the military? No. 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 Oh. Um, Mo Money. Mo Money. Thank oh, you. Oh, I, I, I thought Jada Pickett was in Mo Money. No, nah, she was in um, uh, Fame or whatever it was called. Oh, okay. Shame. I, can't, Shame. I can't get it all together. Yeah, literally clueless, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Was that the um? That was the end of the uh, Would yeah, You Rather. That's one. Rather. All right. Well, that's the end of Would You Rather. Keep them coming, y'all. Y'all be coming about y'all. Yeah. Couple weeks, so we appreciate y'all. Um, if you haven't done so, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's YouTube.com/slash New Twist Radio. That is where all of our live shows have been housed. All of our videos have been housed for not just Ten Seven Show, but for the Check Swing Podcast, for uh, Let's Not Argue, and um, for Intelligent Ignorance. All the and, and some other shows too, so definitely check them out. Um, now we're going to get into our next portion of the show, and this is the part of the show where we read your letters, your IMs, DMs, emails, text messages, however you got in touch with us. These are y'all letters. Y'all bring send them to us. We give y'all our unprofessional, professional opinions on them. Y'all can take it or leave it. It is. But we get y'all for right either way. For so, entertainment purposes only. <laughs> yep, you're taking the first one. So the first one, is, are you John? Uh, I'll do it right here. here. You can see that? Yeah, I can see that. Mm. Good eyes. Got young eyes. Yeah, Put okay. these glasses on. <laughs> All right, here we go. Dear 10-7, my wife and I are newlyweds. After the wedding, my wife's grandfather sent her a check for $10,000. I jokingly asked her to hand over my $5,000 share as her new partner. She responded with an angry rebuke, which inspired me to start thinking seriously. Why aren't I entitled to share in this wedding gift? Should I press the issue? You're damn right you should press the issue. I mean, yeah, you should press no. the issue. why not? 10000 is a lot of money. Like, So what, I'm like, so... What you doing? I know he was joking, but I probably wouldn't... I, I wouldn't have posed the question like that. I'd be like, so what are we going to do with this money? You dig what I'm saying? Because I'm right. sure she right. already got plans for it. Maybe saving. Do you already own property? Who knows what's going on? You dig what but I'm saying? So, yeah. so, I mean, I I think it's weird for him to think just because y'all married now, she should just hand over $5,000 cash to him or check or whatever it may be. That's just me. So, what if she said, "Nope, I'm I'm keeping it all." You would just be okay with that? He would probably have to. I mean, yeah. What else you gonna do? But like I said, like I wouldn't have posed it like that. I'd have been like, "So, what what do you have plans for? What we gonna do? You dig what I'm saying?" Uh -huh. But he, but he, the way he said to me it made it seem like he like, "Yo, bust that joint, game my half." Yeah, right. that's, that's, that's kind of how he said it in the, in the letter. <laughs> that's exactly what he said. Plus, he started off like that jokingly, and then it got serious. He kind of lost that. He kind of lost that. Um, see, plus, I thought he said he said it jokingly, but I think yeah, it was kind of a test, too. For sure, it was a test. I think it was a test. And she failed. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what is telling to me. She responded with an angry rebuke. Like, yeah. why, why are you angry about this? Yeah. Why are you upset? Right. Yeah, I would have. Yeah, she. They both responded wrong. Yeah, that's first wrong. of all, they, you said y'all got married, right? Yeah, they're, they're newlyweds. Exactly. So, like, 
you know, maybe he didn't know the last name or like what, what last name is on the check. You know what I mean? Or did they write Mr. Yeah. Or Mr. So and so? He said the check to her. Maybe they both responded wrong. We don't know the the backstory. Oh, that's true. She could have funded the whole wedding. <laughs> you did what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, we, I guess we don't, we don't have enough information. So I can't, we can't really make an educated decision because um but based on but based on what he's given us, based, based on, on what we have. I'm I, saying I'm, I'm thinking you press the issue, but you don't press it like, "Yo, what's up with this money?" Like, so this the thing you have to. You want to walk away? She say no. I wouldn't make it about the money so much. Like I wouldn't be like the money, the money, the money. I would be like kind of roundabout. Like if this is a significant, this can make a significant difference for us right now. Maybe I'm assuming. Right. Right. Like, why don't we do something kind of smart with right. it? Like, that, that right. That's how I would approach it. You know what? Put this comment up. <laughs> what we got? Here we go. It's my granddad, my money. Really? I don't I, what y'all newlyweds? The two are becoming one. Yeah. Grand opening, grand, grand closing. closing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pretty mm. much. It's a hell of a start to your marriage. Yeah, like, yeah, it really is. Like that's right. that's rough. I, but th that's how I would do it. I'll be like, we're not gonna blow this money. Like, right? Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck with that. Mm. All right. Let's hit that next one. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's see. It's me, right? Yep. You're up. Dear ten seven, I find myself in a dating maze and desperately need some advice. I've been dealing with some mixed signals for the person I'm dating. He's all about making plans and being super affectionate one day, then is distant and, elu and elusive the next. I'm getting whiplash. How do I make sense of this behavior without coming off as needy or insecure? I genuinely care about the connection, but could use some tips for decoding this emotional puzzle. There ain't no decoding. Ask him for the cheat code. Like, what's the problem? Or he's bipolar. Yeah, you got to be straightforward about that. Yeah, if it's bothering you that much, for sure. I mean, because it's like, I'm running hot, I'm running cold. You don't ever know the person that you're going to be talking to from day to day. Yes, I would just be like, I've noticed this and I've noticed that. Is everything okay? Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you need to talk about? Right. Y'all not, y'all not, I feel like y'all may not be looking into this letter. <laughs> Oh God, why you say that, Justin? Amen. Okay, there's a couple things that kind of stood out to me, right? Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna go with the first one first. I found myself in a dating maze. Dating. Mm -hmm. So are you dating multiple people? Mm. Just in a relationship with this one guy, or are you just in a relationship with this guy? And he's dating you, right? Um, he's all affectionate at one point. And the next day he's a he's aloof or whatever you said. I think that's the maze that she's talking about because right. she could be going through and everything is all good. Then all of a sudden she come to a dead end. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the letter of the letter of the letter here. Okay. And I'm gonna ask you, not y'all, but her. Mm -hmm. Did he smash on those days? Oh. And then the next day he's distant. Really? Got to think about that. I think mean, about yeah. that. Because maybe he's affectionate. Oh, okay, you know, I'm trying to, you know, let me let me do let me do what I need to do to, to get what I want to get. And I got it. Hmm. But I think she would catch that trend by now. Apparently not before she wrote us. It's been plenty of people who haven't caught that train. Yeah. Yeah, that, that could be it. Like maybe you just his in the meantime, in between yeah. time when he got time. Oh yeah, that's true. I didn't even think about that. I'm yeah. losing it. Goose like, hmm. <laughs> yeah, you might in, in the meantime. Yeah. Oh, that would be really unfortunate. It would be. Yeah. yeah. So what do we? What's our ultimate advice to her? 
Justin. No, I mean, based Excel. on your observation, make you an Excel spreadsheet and track how when he when you get him. <laughs> <laughs> Or she's a we'll analyze it for you. Uh huh. <laughs> you can take that data, put it on the pie chart. Oh my god! You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. That's and great. then we'll figure out his feelings from there. And create create a <laughs> step that went down. Do we really care about his feelings? <laughs> yeah, you didn't even say really like how long this was going on. No. Like, yeah. So that was that was a good observation. I don't know. Plus, you're just dating. I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. Dating is just like so weird. You know what I mean? Like, like dating is like when people say dating, it's like dating for some people, dating's not the same for everybody. Right. You know what I mean? Like dating for some people is I'm dating this person, this is who I'm with. Right. right. Dating for other people is with I'm dating. Right. right. People. I'm gonna see like, you. Like, John on Monday, right. tied on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. right. And some mm -hmm. people like we're sleeping together, we're dating. Right. Exactly. So we don't know her definition at this point. Exactly. And some people like we're sleeping together. We just sleeping together. Exactly. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. Dating yeah, has to be quantified. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. So we're going to last letter. Dear 107, a couple of years ago, I reconnected with a former boyfriend. Even though he separated from his wife, he is still married and not planning on divorcing her. We've gone on vacation three times along with my brother and sister-in-law who are also friends with him. A few months ago, he sent me a text saying he was flying in to visit me for the weekend. I told him I had other plans and that I wasn't available and he, would, and he went silent, stopped texting or calling and didn't answer my or my brother's calls. This made me realize a few things. He is immature. He wants to be priority and there is no point in seeing each other. I recently got an email from him asking how I'm doing. I don't even want to reply. Am I right in stopping this friendship? Huh. Yeah, good riddance. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Like you, can't, you can't be married, say, you know what I mean, messing around with your wife, tell your, your girlfriend you're not, you're not leaving your wife but didn't want her to be exclusive to you. Uh, but also, meanwhile, we don't know what her plans were. So how, yes, right. he is immature because what if you just planned on going antiquing with your mother that right. weekend? You, you don't owe him any explanation for anything. So right. yeah, he, red flag, red flag. <clears throat> Yeah, he he might be a little cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. You're doing was, you're doing the right thing. In the first place. Mm -hmm. Exactly. That is true. Say, Justin, I didn't hear you. I said he was he he was her ex for a reason in the first place. Well, for sure. I mean, we don't know how old she is, but she said a former boyfriend. So I'm assuming it's been a while if he's married. Exactly. So mm. yeah. Oh, yeah, that's your yep. uh, your ten sevens. That would be it. These were pretty quick and to the point this time around. No. no. Tara, you know we got we got to create a graphic for like when Tara has these these, oh, uh, yeah. these segments. We got I got to create a graphic to like put up there. Oh yeah, yeah. I was like a graphic for what? <laughs> <laughs> but right, go ahead. Right. What's up next? What you got? I have a A I T A. Am I the a hole? So we'll I'm gonna tell you. So it's am I the a hole for going right? Wait for going home right after I found out that my future mother-in-law lied about not bringing kids on our family trip. <clears throat> I, 33 female, am a mother of two girls, seven and five. Their dad passed away and it was a very de devastating loss for both his and my family. I met my now fiance, Jack, 36, two years ago. He's very sweet and adores both my girls equally. However, his mom has a bit of a harsh view on single moms, especially with how low my income is compared to his. He's a doctor. I tried my best to have a good, respectful relationship with her, and she stated, wait, and she started to respond positively. Though I noticed that she's excluded my girls a number of times from a number of occasions. 
future mother-in-law informed us of a three-day family trip that is dedicated for adults only. She said it's because it involved going to the bar and doing activities that aren't child-friendly. She told me I needed to leave my daughters with someone before Jack and I could come, and I immediately had my sister come and stay with them at home. The trip was supposed to be by plane, three-hour flight. We were late, but Jack said he, in he intended to arrive late so we wouldn't have to wait long. I saw his mom and dad there. We talked as we waited for sister-in-law and brother-in-law. I then saw them coming towards us with their three kids behind. I was confused. I looked at future mother-in-law and she avoided eye contact. I immediately asked sister-in-law why she bought her kids and whether she was aware that this wasn't a child-friendly trip. Sister-in-law and her husband looked confused and said, there's no such thing, but I told them what future mother-in-law told me and that's why I didn't bring my girls. Sister-in-law didn't say anything, but her husband told me mother-in-law must have lied and told me this story to prevent me from bringing the girls. Brother-in-law likes the girls and he too sees how inappropriate mother-in-law is being. Sister-in-law yelled at him and lashed out at both Jack and mother-in-law and called her horrible, then walked off. Jack told me to hold on for a minute, but I canceled my ticket and I went home. The family had to get on the plane and after Jack got home, we had a big fight. He had no one, he said no one enjoyed the trip because I caused everyone to fight by how I reacted. I told him she excluded my daughters, but he said that his mom is entitled to her feelings and I shouldn't expect to spring the girls on her all the time when she still doesn't consider them close as her other grandchildren. He promised me all is going to change and I just got to give it time and that I shouldn't have walked off and canceled my ticket like that. Am I the asshole? Nope. No, no, nope. he is. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you tell him, and this is what you tell him. Tell him your mother has a right to her feelings, but she lied, which exactly. tells you she knew what she was doing wrong, which means feelings had nothing to do with it. She was being evil and vindictive. That's what it was about. And screw him and his mother. <laughs> That's how Goose really feels. Yeah, and I agree. Well, wholeheartedly, yeah. she did. She lied. She's being vindictive, and you you're gonna have to, you need to sit down and think. Do you want to deal with that? Is that something you want to deal with for the rest of your life? Because I highly the comments that the comments that came in from um from Reddit, which is where I got this from. You could tell, like, it was like a definite split. Like, some people, most people were like supporting her and they agree with her and they were on her side. But then some people, and I'm assuming that these are people that don't have children, were like, well, why, why should I take kids on my trip? I want to enjoy my time and blah, blah, blah. No, but see, they're dumb because there are other children on that trip. Exactly. If there were no other children on the trip, that's one thing. Right. But there are other children and she purposely left out children. Yep. And the, the other thing that got me about this. To um, this am I the a hole was that um, th when she said something like the mother in law looks down on single moms, like her husband died. Absolutely. He was just out there. But see, the problem is she's looking at her as like a gold digger. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, you know that's, what what she's saying? that's what she's looking at. And, that's really unfortunate because I don't believe that to be true. I mean, I don't even know this woman, but you know. no, no, I don't think it's to be true, but that's. But the lady said it because she feels as though because he's a doctor and I don't make that much money that I'm beneath her son. You dig know what I'm yeah. saying? So I'm sure that the mom thinks that she's only after him for his money mm -hmm. and what he can do. You know what I mean? And that's probably the reason probably why she didn't invite her kids. She's like, I'll pay for her and I'm not paying for her kids mm -hmm. type deal. Yeah. You dig know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's, that's starting off wrong, wrong, wrong. Yeah. The kid Nothing like you, 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 you. That's going to traumatize your children in the long run with with that side of the family behaving like that because they're going to start noticing what mm -hmm. she's doing. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, because they're five and seven right absolutely. now, so they don't know. But if you yep. go ahead and marry him, yep. she, they're yeah, that's gonna. Hurt and then what's kids. gonna happen when the cousins find that you notice it? Right. You know what I'm saying? Because the uh, the the cousins will be treated this way and get this stuff and do all of this. And mm -hmm. then they'll be left out, I'm sure. Yeah. So, you know, so even if you stay with him, you know what I mean? you I would operate as if those people don't exist. That's so sad. 
And that's going to be so sad and hard. You know what I mean? Because that, I just, I don't, I don't, I really don't think she should marry him in the interest of protecting her kids because that's going to really cause a problem. It's because yeah. they're going to recognize what she's doing and they're going to be like, well, what did we do? Why she don't mm -hmm. like us? Yeah. And yeah. Even, even if they um, are married, like wind up getting married and are married for a significant amount of time, I don't think the mother's ever going to come around because she probably is never going to look at them like they're her grandchildren. Exactly. They come from the son. That's why if you really love this man, you need to think about, is this the life you want? Because it's going to be stressful. Family trips, holidays, all that stuff. Yep. That mother will show her whole behind. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was that last? What did she, Tanya say? She so about Tanya's comment? Yeah. She told a fib and anyone who meets mistreats, mistreats children gotcha. is a what? Oh, yeah. Be yeah. <laughs> be yeah, for sure. For sure. Like they're, they're little kids. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why. No, you're, you're not the a-hole the mother is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was cool. We all agree. Yeah. yeah. We all agree. The and that's probably why the husband wanted to arrive late too. He's probably hoping that he would arrive. Maybe after and not have to talk so much. The, yeah, the uh, brother and the sister-in-law oh. and their kids already out on the plane. So what you think he knew? Absolutely, I think he yeah. knew. And if he knew, he absolutely knew. If he knew, then you need to cut that. Doctor, I hope he cut that. He knew. I mean, he might have known. All right, hey, so hey. we all are in agreement. She's not the a-hole. Yes. Because she, because if he didn't know, he should have been there with her. Like, what? Why you got your kids here? <laughs> exactly. That's true. That's true. Mm -hmm. So he probably knew. Yeah. And once it all hit the fan, he ain't take a side. He knew. Yeah, that is true. Well, he had to know because because she, the mother in law, told her it wasn't a kid's trip. But he had he had to know something. That his nieces and nephews were going. But he had to know that they was going, or that that wasn't true. But he wanted right. her to. Oh, absolutely. Right. I, well, like, I really wish we could get inside his head. Like, what were you thinking when you held on to that? I, I don't know. I know we're never going to know, but that's... it was being a mama boy. Mm -hmm. Oh, all right. Well, we're going to go ahead. We're going to move on into our topic of the day. Um, and it's relationship contracts. Yeah, what about that? A relationship contract. What is a relationship contract, Justin? It is a contract. It's an agreement. It's an agreement between two people. Betwixt. Between two people. <laughs> y'all agree to one thing, and then and then and then another the thing, and y'all sign, sign it or verbally agree, or y'all you know spit shake Shaking. on it. Shake hands. Spit shake. Shake on it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Whatever it is. And, Pinky uh, square. Mm -hmm. yeah. And blood oath. In breach of contract, y'all go back to it and see what the repercussions are. Did mm -hmm. we talk about this one, one time before? No, no, know. we talked about marriage license. Uh, we talked yeah, about, we marriage, talked licenses. about marriage licenses. Marriage license. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's mm -hmm. what we talked about. So, what's the, what's the purpose of mm -hmm. of a relationship contract? I mean, if if you're into contracts, another another reason to so, sue somebody. Like if you if you mess up royally. And you signed a contract with somebody. Can you sue them? We need to dig deeper into this. I feel. Well, I think you can. Contracts are if legally binding. It's a binding, binding agreement. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, right. Like, but you know, the trash out. No, I no, because the thing about it is there are we we'll discuss. There are key components to this contract. I mean, of course, both sides have to agree, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's something as minute as you didn't take the trash out. You know what I'm saying? You can have a contract for anything. It could be if you put it in, in the contract. Yeah, it could be. Whatever right. you put in the contract. Mm -hmm. So, well, basically, the primary purpose of a relationship contract is to provide clarity. So you take the trash out. Mm -hmm. And communication about the expectations and boundaries each partner mm -hmm. has within the relationship. So, for instance, when it snows, the expectation is the husband and the father shovels and cleans the cars. The husband and the father, the same person. In this household. 
<laughs> in this household, they are. <laughs> Think about these contracts. Clean her car off yesterday. <laughs> As you should have. As you should have. You're the husband and the father. You clean the cars off. Well, I ain't bullet in the garage. Tanya said it's a it's a prenup. That's basically what it is. Yeah, it's a prenup. Yeah. It's a prenup. It can, it can be like if if y'all if y'all put in an agreement about how if y'all accumulate stuff together as a couple, mm-hmm. oh yeah, you can make it like a prenup. Okay. But you can also make it like a a vow agreement. Well, so here here's a couple topics that could potentially fit into your contract. Okay, so it's it's all based on couple preference, but some common ones are mm-hmm. communication styles and frequency. And I know in past conversations, Tyra, you said that you and Justin do check-ins. Mm-hmm. Do you, you guys still do that? Not as frequently, but we still do them every now and then. Yeah. Okay. She does them. She does them. Like you all right? Yeah, I'm all right. You all right? You cool? Yeah. That's what's yeah. up. Yeah, she does, she does the check-ins more than I do. I mean, I, yeah. I feel like I definitely do it more than you do. All right. Yeah, look, yeah, yeah, sure. I just... I'm just here on the couch. Whatever you need to say something to me, I'm here. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, well, something bothering you? I'll tell you what it bothered me. Oh, is that what you say, Justin? <laughs> yes. That's really smart. Thank you, Tara. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so then the next one is division of responsibilities and chores. See? We already discussed that. Financial arrangements and expectations. Mm-hmm. Intimacy yeah. and physical affection. Why is that in your contract? I had to put that in the contract. Twice a day, three times on Sunday. <laughs> Wait, please go to work. Comment because that's hilarious. I think a lot of husbands <laughs> fall into that. Yeah. As I am. So what she says is, my husband checks in after he done pissed me off. Uh-huh. Like, oh, you mad about that? No, but then it, it's like that meme and it'd be like, oh, my wife is mad, like still or again. <laughs> right. That's not funny. That's a, Tyra, that's a, we don't laugh at that. We don't laugh at that, Tyra. We don't laugh at that. I know, I know. She can laugh at it. She knows. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So another well, you're not alone. that might be covered is long term goals and aspirations. So like if you want to become a 50 year old rapper, do I have to support that? Or absolutely. Like when when do you let that dream go? If you sign the contract, you gotta support it. You want to be a 50 year old rapper? I don't want to be a 42 year old rapper. <laughs> <laughs> right. All right. But and then have the industry uh locked up. Yeah, yeah. Jay-Z like 50 in. Yeah. yeah. I think he probably yeah. is, right? Nothing Jay-Z. all all of all of them from our forties and fifties. <sighs> Method man. Um, conflict resolution strategies. I don't really have a conflict resolution strategy. Do you guys have a conflict resolution strategy? Yeah. When we feel the need to argue, we strip off all our clothes and then look at each other and try to argue and then <laughs> try to argue naked. Yeah, we try to argue naked and don't work out, and then that's a good thing though. Maybe that is a good thing, but just don't have an argument in the mall because then. That goes all the way left. But we'll go viral. Oh my gosh. <laughs> be on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Would definitely go viral. That sounds like a good plan. I go around here starting arguments and then she'd be like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't say I'm that. Do that. Next time we argue, I'm gonna just get naked. And, and I bet you he'll stop talking. It won't be oh, another yeah. word. Of he even lost his train of thought and everything. Okay, don't even know why you mad. That mm-hmm. was snap. That was snap. I feel like, I feel like Tyra would do that. I probably if, would <laughs> if she were the one in the wrong. Oh, yeah. If you were the one, you were. If I was in the wrong, would you do it? That's no, because you wouldn't do like that. That's fair. I, because would. I wouldn't either. See. Nope. If I'm like Tyra. What the hell, Lana? What what the, what the and then she just get naked because she knew she was wrong. <laughs> and, and it yeah. will work. It, it will work. Right. That will work. That will work. Yep. Like, oh, you just going to take off all your clothes. Huh? 
That's how we solve it. See, nakedness solves it. That ain't how you solve it. <laughs> to solve a couple things. It could, it could be. It could be. It could, it could solve it for the moment. That's a really oh. good band aid, name brand band aid with the good adhesive. All right. That's all that is. All right. We're going to back this train out a little bit, you guys, because y'all were all wrong. Relationship contracts are generally not legally binding in the same what? way as marriage contracts or prenuptial agreements. Okay. Yeah. It says they're more about setting emotional and practical guidelines. So look at it as guidelines. I would say. I, you are. Right? I would say it depends on what you put in the contract. I rather, oh, but they said. I mean, like if you went and had this contract like signed and drawn up, I get that's basically a prenup. Then, if, yeah, so it's called a prenup. But I think also in a prenup, I mean, but you could put whatever you want in your contract. So right. if it were a prenup, it's more about finances. I, I, right, like you know what I mean, like that's. This is more like a, no, an emotion. Who takes the trash out? You can put that in the prenup. Why not? Because it's that's, it's that's the a thing that you contract. agree to prior to your nuptials. Right. So also with this, like with anything, right? Consent and communication. Both partners must willingly agree to the terms that are outlined in your contract. So even if it's down the line somewhere, you agree to this. We have a deal, it's a contract, got to stick to the contract, right? Yeah, the time frame in that contract, too. Like, I can, re I can renegotiate the terms of this contract every however many years or whatever, you every, know? Every three and three quarter years. <laughs> three and three quarter, <laughs> really? Just <laughs> he need a good sleep. He tired. Mm -hmm. Um. <laughs> flexibility okay relationship contracts should be seen as adaptable documents that evolve as the relationship evolves like yeah no, i agree with that yeah they should living document. yep um professional assistance some couples choose to involve relationship counselors or legal professionals i mean we're always telling people to seek, seek therapy mm -hmm. <laughs> we're not necessarily it um controversy and criticism relationship contracts can be controversial as some people believe that love and commitment should be organic and not governed by formal agreements. Some people can't live without a formal agreement. Like it's not real to them until it's written down. But critics argue that such contracts may undermine the emotional spontaneity of a relationship. What y'all think about that? I agree with that. Maybe because you got to check the contract. Right. Like, I don't know. I don't I violate can, we, can we do that? You might be taking secret notes and to build up evidence against me and be like, oh. December the third, June. Right. <laughs> you yeah. write stuff down so much. Paragraph four, <laughs> section seven. Right. Mm -hmm. The contract states. Yeah. Justin, you, you want to say something? Nope. Oh, okay. All right. So down to the the end of my little spiel here. While relationship contracts work for some couples as a tool for clarity and communication. They might not be suitable for everyone. It's crucial for partners to approach the process with open-mindedness, transparency, and a shared commitment to the well-being of the relationship. I kind of feel like it's all well and good when you draft this or agree to this, but over time, I, I will forget. Yeah, and this other thing, who want to keep every time something happened or a life event happens, you want to go back? And change this contract. There's too many stuff in life to keep track of now to be exactly. adding this kind of stuff. Yeah. I'm trying but to memorize all my passwords. Uh, child, please. I think maybe <laughs> maybe instead of drafting this, maybe that's something that you it could be reevaluated over time. You don't have to necessarily say it's a contract, but like we've always said, you're married to 10 different people over the course of your marriage, or you can be. Like, so as you evolve and as you change, things in your relationship are going to evolve and change. So it doesn't necessarily need to be written down. It's just, it, this is understood between us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And it's often an unspoken understanding. True. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There you have it. That's it, Justin. Thank you for coming to my TikTok. Contracts. <laughs>
we're going to uh, get down to the final segment of the show, final portion of the show. It is the final twist. Does anybody have a final twist that they would like to relay? <laughs> or Oh, go ahead. Tara me, has one. Me. Tara has one. Okay. Don't look at my <laughs> okay, mine is at a certain age, things are not misunderstandings or mistakes anymore. It is your character, and I'm not with it. Mm. I'll let y'all sit on that. Uh, I, I think I've said, yeah, I've, uh -huh. I agree with that. I ain't did nothing. So. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't got it today. Mm -hmm. No, that was not about you I at know. all. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> I have a couple of things I want to share. So. I don't have. Oh, one. that's oh, great. Okay. okay, well then. Well, I just got mine is short. We'll leave you for the end. Yeah, mine is short. I just want to say, people, uh, don't forget to think outside the box. Try new things. You don't know what you like until you try. You know, so mm -hmm. that's all I'm gonna say. Absolutely fair. I like it. All right, so uh, I do have a final twist to give. Um, but <laughs> um, you ever you, we've talked on shows in the past about how like Tyra will ask me, "What are you thinking about?" and I'm like, "Nothing," and she's mm -hmm. like, "You can't just not be thinking about nothing." And I've given examples of like things that I might be thinking about, but it just really don't make no sense. Like I will think about like, does Antarctica have a mayor? Like, like I'll think of I'll be thinking of dumb stuff like that, right? So one day I was at work, and you know we use the um, we don't use the metric system in this country. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Use what's called the imperial system, um, and. I was wondering, like, why don't, why didn't we move over to the metric system? But, you know, but I found it interesting that there's only three countries in the entire world that still use the imperial system. One being us, one being, um, what is it, Liberia, hmm. and the, uh, the other one is Mi 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 Miramar. Myanmar. Myanmar. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I, I, that was just something I found interesting. Like, there's only three countries in the entire world. That, that is, is still really measure system of measurement. So I don't know. I just found that interesting. But um I did have a a final twist ready, and then somebody sent me something, and I was like, I want to use that. Mm -hmm. um, now I can't find it. Oh, wait, here we go. I'm not looking, I'm not looking. Not cheap. <laughs> <clears throat> here we go. He really covering up his phone. <laughs> it was a quote. Peace. Sure, my dear. All right. You okay over there? All right. I had, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Peace cannot be kept by force. It can only be achieved by understanding. That was a quote by one Albert Einstein. I know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting quotes. I, I, I like when I read it, I was like, I like that. So I was yeah. like, that's gonna be my final that. But you have it. You say you didn't have one, right? I don't have one today. That's oh, okay. No worries. It's all good. Yeah. So now you can watch your all-star game because it's before eight o'clock. Yep. Absolutely. We, we were in a uh we were in agreement with the NBA that we would finish our show before the start of the all-star game. <laughs> And um, we have accomplished that. So you can call um, Mr. Uh, Adam Silver, Commissioner of the NBA, and you can let him know that we have ended our show. And I'll call him and I'll let him know as well so they can get the All-Star game started. Okay, cool. So with all that being said, we're going to get up out of here because that's what we agreed with with the NBA. And uh, <laughs> we'll see y'all next week. Are we going to be on next week, y'all? We should be. Yeah, I don't see why we wouldn't. Thank God you. willing, we'll be here. Yeah. Okay. Let me check this yeah. out. Street don't rise. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay, so yeah, we're going to get up out of here. We're going to get it. Yep, bye, Tara. Uh, Tara. Bye, Tanya. 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 <laughs> I know I was going to mess it up one day. Uh, what good, good thing Tanya not sitting here with us every week. You'd really be in a tongue twister. Oh, you'd be in a mess. Mm -hmm. All right, y'all. We out of here. Talk to y'all next week. All right, y'all. Peace. Be kind, people.